Rebecca. So, Rebecca, yeah. can you uh, introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. Um, so I'm Rebecca Sullivan. I work for Fast Company and Inc. Magazine, Mansa Widow Ventures, and I've been there. It's actually going to be my 10th year come August, which seems a little crazy to me yeah. to be at one company for so long. Um, and so the consumer marketing team, we pretty much are the audience people. We are there anytime a consumer is making a transaction with our brand, it hits our team. So that's all of our events, our recognition programs. Um, you know, Inc. 5000 is probably one of the most well-known recognition programs. Uh, Swugo is a previous honoree of the Inc. 5000. Uh, our circulation, uh, even our paywall. Um, but yeah, pretty much any time a consumer is making a transaction, our team is involved in some way, shape, or form. So cool, so cool. So one thing I think is really interesting about uh, Inc. and Fast Company is that they have such a like diverse audience. Like you have uh, C-suite folks and like the big wigs that like devour your content, and then there are people like me who read uh, your content. So I'm curious, how do you go about like marketing to and interacting with those different audiences? It really just starts with uh, what are we marketing? <laughs> I know we're here talking about events, uh, but what type of event are we marketing? Who is the event for? Um, so we do, you know, we do a range of events from one hour virtual webinars to multi-session virtual webinars to multi-day virtual we webinars to private dinners for CC executives to uh, four day, five day innovation festivals. Um, and so once we kind of understand what the event is and who it's for, that kind of leans itself to, okay, what is our marketing strategy to get the right audience there? Um, so something like the C-suite, you know, those are more of your intimate dinners, invite only type of moments. And so those are really high touch hand outreach. Uh, we use the Swugo invite list feature all the time for that. Um, and sometimes we do, being two media brands, we do have um, in magazines, we have editor-in-chiefs on both brands. And so sometimes those invites will really come from them, um, from their Rolodex. And then for the bigger, you know, more festival-like, so these images here, you can see the one on my left is, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at here, looking at there. Um, you can see the one picture of the image there is with the table. So that's like a, we did a, an event in New York a couple weeks ago called Stability in a Storm. And that was for C-suite C executives of companies of 10,000 or more employees. And that was done with McKinsey and company. And so that was very, very high level, very invite only. And everything was personal outreach. Uh, whereas the other image is an image from our innovation festival from the past year. And we're doing our ninth one this year in September in the city. And that is where we're you know, using more of your mass marketing channels, you know, paid marketing from paid social, LinkedIn, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. Google. Um, you know, we are fortunate that we are two media brands, so we do have our own audience we can go out to. You know, so we have our own uh, ads and magazines. Uh, we have, we've also leaned into partnerships with mm -hmm. different sponsors of events. So something like the festival, um, you know, in previous years, we had one of the founders of the Skim come speak. And so we, you know, leaned into that and worked with that, them to reach out to their audience. Um, and it really has, you know, tapping into those partnerships and different spon sponsorships for those bigger events has been really beneficial for getting the word out. For sure, for sure. And so uh, I'm curious. So you've had hundreds of events, right, um, with all these diverse groups. Have you noticed any trends in audience behavior? Uh, or like, I don't know, what have you noticed like folks change doing in the past few years? There's been a lot of change, especially since COVID. Uh, I think one of the biggest ones, I think everyone can agree, virtual events. Uh, mm -hmm. It became a whole new line of business for us. Um, so if you told me before COVID that 90% of the events I worked on going forward would be virtual events, I probably would have laughed in your face. Um, <laughs> Like there, so it's that's we now do. I would say two to three a week, sometimes mm. more. Um, we have one tomorrow. <laughs> we had one yesterday, um, and so that has it's just a whole new line of business for us. And so that's been really great. Just the willingness and want for uh, people to go to these virtual events. On the downside, we've seen uh, show up rate drop uh, drastically, very much so for the virtual events. You know, we're seeing. I would say a 30% show up rate for virtual mm -hmm. events. Um, not as much downside in the in-person events. And I think you know people, after years of being inside, they're so eager to sign up and do everything, but then life happens and mm -hmm. you know they can't do everything right away. Um, 
And so for the virtual events, we've been doing a lot of things um, to try to combat that. And so we've leaned into you know, doing video on demand, which has been really great with Swugo, where we, you know, maybe they don't make the event when it's airing live at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. or whatever time it is, but we make the video available for them for the next 30 days. And even when they click that link in Swugo, it still updates their status mm -hmm. to attend it. And so in our, you know, for a custom sponsored event, you know, we're still getting what the goal of the event was, was mm -hmm. to get the audience to engage with the content. And maybe they didn't do it at two o'clock on a Tuesday, but you know, if they did it two o'clock on a Wednesday on their own time, and they're still engaging with the con content, you know, I think, you know, we did our jobs. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. What about for in-person events? Have you noticed um, what kind of changes are going on there? There's uh, kind of the same of the not more drop-off, not as heavy as virtual events, mm -hmm. but, uh, and so for those, we're being a little more, I say a little more, probably a lot more aggressive with our reminder <laughs> emails, and uh, we're really starting that conversation with attendees a lot earlier, and instead of, you know, previously, it w we would, you know, send a reminder email maybe a week before, uh, two days before, but now, now we're starting three weeks before, and we're mm -hmm. starting conversations and really talking, especially if it's a smaller event of 100 people or less. Um, we're getting them to reconfirm with us where mm -hmm. we've tested out text messaging. That's been you know, very helpful. Uh, one person actually came up to me and said that it was the most reminders, but the best reminders they've ever gotten at an event, <laughs> <laughs> and I've never been so pleased that my, uh, <laughs> my multiple emails made it their way to them. Um, and so, you know, that's been really helpful, and it's been really helpful for people who have actually, you know, said, oh, sorry, I can't come anymore. And so we instantly know, okay, let's adjust this, and it helps us um, just kind of figure out so we're not surprised on the day of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was thinking as an attendee, if I can't attend, I would love to be able to just quickly say, like, no, I can't. Um, it's like a win-win. You have the chance to um, get the next person in, especially for these in-person events. Um, I'm curious, uh, have you noticed anything about sponsors as well, like different sponsor behaviors? Yeah, I mean, sponsors, we've been doing all the custom events, the virtual like single session, mm -hmm. a lot of them are just straight sponsor events. So we're, mm -hmm. they've, the interest, and granted we're a media brand, so there's been such an interest in events over what used to be an av their advertising of print and digital. You know, the, everybody wants these experience. They want the events. Um, and there's been, you know, it's been an interesting just to kind of see that shift. And so that's one of the reasons we're doing more events than we've ever done before mm -hmm. is because sponsors, they want experiences. They want to connect with their audiences in real time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't want to just you know, have a, an ad on the site or an ad in the print magazine. For sure, for sure. One of the things that you shared with me before that I thought was really cool was, uh, since a lot of your stuff is templated, right, or the, uh, like, website and stuff like that, is you can quickly be able to show, like, okay, this is where yeah. the logo goes, this is where everything goes, so it makes it, like, really easy for the pitch and stuff like that. Yeah, we've created those kind of same templates um, where we have, you know, we have a virtual event template that we have, like, a single session, a multi-session, a multi-day session, and, you know, with, with a couple assets, we can have it up in two hours. Wow. Thanks to Sugo, yeah. thanks to these templates that we can create, and it's been great. Um, and it allows us to kind of do more than, pre mm. than we could before. For sure, for sure. Uh, does anybody have any questions here for Rebecca? All right. Oh, sorry, right here in the corner. I know it is hard to see up here. Yeah, it's hard to see. <laughs> Um, for these email, uh, do you use the, the Swugo email features and, and how, how does that work? Do you, do you count or any, um, as opposed to run, like sending a thing on your own internal camp email client and then directing them to Swugo and then they're going to email? Yeah, so these emails uh, are both, one of them is actually from Swugo, the other is a mail merge. Uh, but we do pretty much all of our notifications of reminding people for the upcoming event information are all through uh, Swugo. We use the notification emails for that. They've been great because we can see when people have opened them. We can even see, you know, looking at somebody's registration record, we can see the history of all the emails mm -hmm. they've gotten. So that's always been really helpful for us. We can see if they've opened it, if they haven't. And so a lot of times, you know, if they haven't opened it, but it's been delivered, we may then send them a second email that's a mail merge from an Outlook just to, you know, make sure they're getting the important information they need to be able to attend the event. For sure. For sure. One thing I really like about these two is that you can tell 
Um, and we're thinking, we thought about this a lot. So when we're doing uh, events that are a lot more intimate, right, then we'll send the mail merge looking one, you know, versus like the, the large one that has like the beautiful text and stuff like that. And then we'll switch it around, you know. So if the first one doesn't work, then we'll try the other one because people interact with uh, different email types as well. Uh, any other questions for Rebecca? In the back there. Race, race, who's gonna get them? Who's gonna get them? <laughs> Oh, Aaron wins. <laughs> Hi, I, I noticed you all use um, InGo for, for registration on top of Swugo. I was just wondering if you could speak to your experience with that, the effectiveness, how many people choose to register that way versus the traditional way, and then also uh, uh, if you have challenges with people using personal emails to register hmm. through that tool versus you know, collecting the business address through the traditional way. Yeah, uh, we've used Ingo, I want to say, for three years now, maybe even longer. Um, it's been a great tool for us. It really helps, especially for those bigger events. So, you know, that image before where you saw the, the big stadium audience at the festival, we would use it for something like that. It just adds a lot of impressions, and it's really effective just to kind of get the word out and get that brand awareness about the events. Uh, for some of the smaller events, we wouldn't use it, so that intimate dinner, we wouldn't use it for that. Um, the, you know... People do tend to use, we get a mix of people using their personal emails versus their company emails, and we are, our brands are inter interesting that it's kind of B2B and B2C mm -hmm. for people who read both Fast Company and both Inc. Um, and we've, you know, we just kind of have to consolidate with the emails we have. Um, but Ango has been very effective. We've also started using it uh, for speakers to promote that they're attendance. So the same way that attendees can kind of register and promote out an image, we're able to then create a separate link and it has a, a social card that would overlay the speaker's headshot from LinkedIn that they can then post out. And it saves uh, our creative team a lot of time instead of designing or putting together 50 or 60 different assets that all look the same with just a different headshot. So that's been a big uh, time saver for us. Um, and for the most part, people are happy to use Ingo too. I think, you know, we've, there's been one complaint, actually that year next move event right there. Um, <laughs> that was the one complaint we got about that, <laughs> them using that because the, that was specific to that event where the title is, uh, it was quitting your day job, what's ne your next passion. And so there was the one complaint where somebody did, you know, the social card that went out on their LinkedIn that said quitting your day job. <laughs> They weren't planning to quit their day job, uh, so they weren't, they weren't too pleased that that happened, which was very great feedback and, you know, something that we needed to think about for, for future events and what is going on those cards when people uh, push it out to their networks when they register. That's really funny. I bet their boss was like, uh, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And can you talk quickly about text messages? You mentioned yeah. that, like texting was a really great reminder tool for folks. Um, how did you come to that, and like what results have you seen? So we've uh, it was we used it most recently with the same year next move event, um, and it's been really great. You know, we've been able to send reminder like link reminders, link to the important information. This event we did a uh, Uber code, and we were able to cool. include everything in that, and people can reply directly. They can immediately unsubscribe from that. Hmm. But it's just kind of a nudge, another t nice touch point where you know people are getting so many emails, and they can opt out instantly. Um, and it has been very, very effective. Uh, and I would we're going to continue doing it pretty much for every event going forward. Uh, for the festival that's coming up in September. Uh, in New York City, we still have to figure out how we're going to use text messages for that one because that's an, uh, an event for hmm. three to four thousand people. So we'll have to get a little more um, buttoned up on how who we're texting exactly for that. But uh, it's definitely something that has proven effective to making sure people show up and just being in that kind of constant communication, so you know what your attendees are expecting from you and um, what you're expecting from them. For sure, that's really cool. And I think it talks a good bit to like the optionality, the ability to like mix and match different pieces of technology. Um, we'll take one last question. Um, sorry, uh, choose Aaron. <laughs> what is the texting platform you're using? Is it within Swugo? It is not within Swugo. I have to, I'll get it from my colleague. <laughs> she was the one who used it last. Um, I will find it and I, if you can find me after this, I will give you the name of it. Okay, cool. That was a very concise answer. I think we can do the second question. <laughs> okay, <sorry. laughs> 
I was going to ask the same question. I've, I've used one called Text Magic that's worked really, really well, but I was just wondering if you were using the same platform. All right. Well, if we can give Rebecca a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you.